Hi, I'm Keith. I'm going to show you how to change the hydraulic filters on a John Deere 17G. To service your hydraulic system, you'll need a few different hydraulic filters. John Deere part number 4692230, mounting O-ring of T110443, and the hydraulic pilot filter with O-ring, John Deere part number 4294130. You may also need to top up your hydraulic oil while doing the service. We recommend using Tecmo AW46. For a list of equivalents, Check the website, FordisHD.com. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna remove this panel. We have three 17 millimeter uh, bolts here. So we had to remove the side to get to the top, pull the seal back a little bit, it just presses on. These are 13 millimeter bolts. There's two of them. There's a little pocket that sits in there, so we wanna lift out of that pocket and you can pull it straight out. Now we have the top of the hydraulic tank. Quite often, it's under a little bit of pressure, so the first thing I wanna do is vent the pressure off. As you can see, there was some pressure, it popped off. If you don't relieve the pressure, when you undo the filter housing lid here, oil will push up and out. So make sure you release the pressure. You can tighten it up if you'd like. I like to leave it loose just so it can vent, but make sure you put the cap back on top. It's gonna to stop any dirt as you're working up here from entering the hydraulic tank, anything like that. There's a little bit of dirt and dust, a little bit oily up here from the last time it was changed. I like to wipe it off so when we remove this lid, there's no chance of any oil or oily dirt or any dirt or dust getting into the uh, hydraulic system and contaminating anything. Next step is to remove these four bolts and remove the hydraulic filter lid. It's a 13 millimeter as well. There is a spring underneath this lid, so I like to go across from each other. Now with my gun, I might not be able to get on that one, so we're gonna use a ratchet for that one. And what I'll do is I'll crack them both a little bit loose. Now that they're both a little bit loose, hold down the lid with one hand, pull the bolts out with the other one, because as you can see, the spring is pushing up on it. Now that the bolts are out, this is gonna spring up a little bit. That's that spring I was talking to you about. Flip it upside down, a little bit of oil on there is okay. You can give it a bit of a wipe and then you don't have to worry about where it streams down to. Next, you're gonna pull the spring off. I like to put it on the lid. And the next thing you have in here is what they call a bypass. It sits on top of the filter and this is what the spring holds down. It seals it against the filter. I like to let it drip off a little bit. Again, I put it right on top of the spring and I know that that's how it goes back in as we're putting it back together. I like to take the drain pan, I like to hold it close just in case it starts spilling out. The filter just sits in there, it doesn't screw in or anything, it just sits in there so you can just grab it, lift, I like to let it drain. You can see all the oil coming off of it. And then if you hold it up high enough, you can get the drain pan underneath it. This is the hydraulic filter that came out of the machine. I usually give it a real quick look and see if there's any pieces of seal or any debris hanging off the end of it. It looks pretty clean and normal to me. We highly recommend you sample your hydraulic oil. For a video on how to do that and how to properly read the results, check the link below. Now we have the new hydraulic filter. Again, we bought this one OEM. You can buy them aftermarket. We want to pull it out of its packaging. Even though it's OEM, we want to make sure it matches the filter that came out of the machine. We're the same length, the same top, the same bottom. It's actually, there is no top and bottom. The top and bottom is the same. You can put it in either way. As you just drop it in there, let it sink down. There's a little pipe on the bottom that you can feel as it goes down. If it lands on top like that, you get it on there, let it sit all the way down. There's an O-ring right here, it's a sealing O-ring. You don't always have to change it. I prefer to change it every time. Pick the O-ring out, you can use a little screwdriver, you can use whatever you like. That's the O-ring there. Give the O-ring groove a little bit of a wipe, make sure no dirt fell in there. Now there's multiple things you can do. You can just drop the O-ring in there. Some people like to put a little bit of grease on it. Personally, what I do is I drop the O-ring in. You wanna push it in all the way around because it's a hair bigger than the groove. And I'll get a little bit of hydraulic oil on my finger and just wipe a little bit of hydraulic oil on it. Next, we're gonna take the bypass. That's what this is called. What it does is the hydraulic oil filter can't allow enough oil to go through the filter for the amount of oil that's going through the machine. So in this little canister that your hydraulic filter is, once it hits a certain pressure because it can't get through the filter fast enough, this bypass will open up, it's spring-loaded. As you can see, my screwdriver can push that open. When it hits enough pressure, it opens, dumps it back to tank, and that way it doesn't destroy the filter. So we drop that in, we drop the spring right on top, that's exactly how we took it out. And then now when we put the cap on, we wanna make sure the spring sits inside of this small pipe. So we bring it over, we bring it on top, 
Sometimes have to play with it. That spring is just inside. Push down with one hand and then you can get two bolts started to hold it down. Start with one corner and then the next bolt is always across from it to make sure the spring goes straight down. If you do one corner and then you go beside it, a lot of times this side will lift up and it's hard to get back down and it won't seal correctly. The next thing we're gonna change is the pilot filter. Now the pilot filter is in here, but it's accessed from under the belly pan. I'm gonna pull these two panels off real quick just to show you where it is. So this is the pilot filter housing right here. So there's a little belly pan underneath here. There's four bolts that hold it on. The two closest to the middle of the machine, you just need to loosen. The belly pan will be slotted. There's a hole made for accessing the bottom of the pilot filter to be able to unscrew it. Now this canister is screwed into the housing. It's a 24 mil socket that you'll need to loosen it. Hydraulic oil will come out just a little bit. It'll come out a bit, nothing serious. It gets to a point where it's loose enough to do by hand and you can just undo it by hand. And as you can see, the filter is hanging in there. We can pop it off and grab it. I like to dump the oil out in the canister. You can look in the bottom for any debris or anything like that. Looks pretty clean. We're gonna give it a wipe out anyways. And now this hydraulic oil filter hasn't been changed in a little while, due for a service. And you can see when I grab the new one, you can see the marks that it's leaving on my fingers. That's not dirt or contamination necessarily. That's just the oil breaking down, getting dirty, leaving residue behind is all that that is. That's very normal. Now we have an OEM filter here. You can get these aftermarket. This one happens to be OEM. Comes with an O-ring to reseal it. So I always like to double check the filter. Same length, same bottom, same top. We know it's the correct filter. I like to wipe the whole thing off. And then usually I give it a little bit of a squirt with brake clean just to get it nice and clean. And you can see here's the sealing O-ring. I like to change it every time. You can use a pick, a screwdriver, anything. Pop it out. Pop the new one in. Now, normally you wanna make sure it's lubricated. There will be a bit of oil up inside the housing that'll make sure it's lubricated. My hands have a little bit of oil on them. Now to pop the new one in, we don't wanna just do that. It will not seal correctly. Put it in the hole, you can feel it and then give it a small push up, you see? And it'll click on. So we know we're against it and then it goes up. It'll stay there. Now you can take the canister, put the canister over it and just screw the canister back on. Make sure you put a ratchet on this one because it'll hit a point where you can't do it by hand anymore. And that filter has changed. We can put the belly pan back on now and we can put the side panels on again. You guys won't have the side panels off. Now that the hydraulic filter has been changed, we may as well check the hydraulic level and top it up if need be. In behind this panel here, if you open it with this latch right here, you just lift the latch up door swings open, hydraulic oil level sight glass here. Now you wanna be between the two red lines. We have a lower one and an upper one, and you can see right now we're at the lower one. So it is okay to run it here. I prefer to see it at least in the middle or higher. It is cold weather out. It will change with the temperature. You do wanna make sure the machine is in this position to check the hydraulic oil. Stick all the way out, bucket curled almost all the way in or all the way in is fine, and then just sitting on the ground and the blade down. If you have it in a different position, it will change the amount of hydraulic oil that's in the tank and you won't get an accurate reading. So in this case, we know we're a little bit low. We're gonna top it up a little bit. Your fill cap is right here where we vented the pressure out. We fill it up through here, view it through the sight glass. You can use a funnel with a bucket. You can use smaller containers. I prefer to use a fill jug as we use buckets of oil. Next, you wanna put yourself in a position that you can see the sight glass as well as be able to pour it in. So you can watch it come up and you can stop at the correct time. Sometimes when you stop pouring, if it's going in fast, it'll continue to rise. Just like now, it's slowly rising a little bit. There, it looks like it leveled off. We're above the halfway mark. We're not quite to the top red line. I'm gonna leave it there just because as the machine gets hot, the oil will expand and it'll rise in the tank. So this will give it that room to be able to expand. Now that we've filled the hydraulic tank, we know it's at a good level. We can put the cap back on. We can close the back gate and then we can put our panels back on. When you're putting this back together, make sure you press the seal back on. Again, it just pushes on. And now we can reassemble the panels. 
If you've bought your filters from the dealer, sometimes they'll supply what they call a suction filter or a strainer filter. This is the strainer filter. Bigger excavators, they're easy to change on this particular machine. The only way to change it is to drain the hydraulic oil. And it's a little bit tough to see, but it goes right there with the hydraulic fitting in it. So when you drain the hydraulic oil filter, you got to pull the hose off that fitting, pull the fitting out, and then you can get at the four bolts that hold it on, undo them, change it, comes with an O-ring to change the O-ring, and then reassemble back together and then refill your hydraulic tank. On a 500 hour service, we don't need to change the hydraulic oil. We won't need to change the suction filter. It is a metal filter. It's not a fiber filter where it gets plugged up very easily. All it's meant to do is to stop any contaminants that may be floating around in the tank. It filters the oil before it goes to the pumps. If you don't have time to do the service yourself, or you want to get on a preventative maintenance program, reach out to techofohd.com and they can set you up with a heavy duty mechanic in your area.